Hey everyone, it's Jensen. Today is Monday, September 28th, and from the presidential debate to job opportunities right here in Northwest Ohio, I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop today. But first, let's take a look at the latest coronavirus data reported from the state. So today, there were 993 new cases of coronavirus reported compared to the 21-day average of 975. The state reported five coronavirus-related deaths compared to the average of 22. There were 91 new hospitalizations in the last 24 hours compared to the average of 68. And there were 10 ICU admissions compared to 11. And Halloween is just one month away. So have you got your kid's costume yet or your own costume yet? Well, if you haven't, there are some things the CDC wants you to consider. Unsurprisingly, health officials warn that the mask your kid might want to wear may not be the safe one to wear as we continue to fight the spread of coronavirus. Don't just use a costume mask as a substitute for a cloth mask, but the CDC also warns against wearing a cloth covering underneath a Halloween mask because it can be dangerous for breathing. So what do they suggest? Well, maybe consider wearing a Halloween themed cloth mask in place of a traditional costume mask. And you know, it's not a terrible compromise. But honestly, the CDC has also suggested that people avoid going door to door trick or treating, labeling that along with other activities like haunted houses as being high risk. But they do have some creative solutions so that you can still celebrate those traditions, but stay safe. So check those out. But on Wednesday, a COVID-19 pop-up testing site will be available in Oregon. It is a no-cost test and no appointment is needed. Just show up on the scheduled day. This one will be at the Oregon Recreation Soccer Fields. That address is 5401 Star Extension. And it will be open from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. A healthcare provider's referral is not needed either, but keep in mind quantity might be limited. And if you need a job or you know someone looking for work, Listen up. Amazon is looking to hire more than 1,000 new full-time positions ahead of opening its operations facility in Rossford. Employees must be 18 years or older and have a high school diploma or equivalent to apply. Basically, if you're hired, you will work to pick, pack, and ship smaller items like clothes at the Fulfillment Center on Crossroads Parkway, which is expected to open at the end of the year. So here's what's being offered. $15 minimum wage as well as health, vision, and dental insurance, 401k with 50% company match, up to 20 weeks paid parental leave, and Amazon's Career Choice Program, which prepays 95% of tuition for courses in high demand fields. Amazon is also planning to invest more than $700 million to provide upskill training for 100,000 U.S. employees for in-demand jobs. If you're interested, apply online and you can sign up for text alerts by sending T-O-L-N-O-W, all one word, to 77088. But let's shift focus a little bit here to a tragic story from our area. A Toledo woman died early this morning after being pulled from a pond in Waterville last night. Rescue crews from multiple departments were searching the water in a pond near the roundabout on Dutch Road and Waterville Monclova Road across from the Children's Discovery Center around 11 o'clock last night. Crews pulled a woman later identified as 28-year-old Kiana Drake from her Mazda 3 after she had been submerged for more than half an hour. It was taken to the Toledo Hospital where she died from her injuries. Officials say Drake was the one who called 911 for help after the crash. Her car was about 12 feet underwater when the five rescue crews arrived on the scene. The crash is still under investigation, but police say this is the second time a car has gone into that pond that is right there at a roundabout. And according to a report by the New York Times, President Donald Trump paid just $750 in federal income taxes the year he ran for president and in the first year in the White House. Trump reportedly paid no federal income taxes in 10 of the past 15 years. The president's financial disclosures indicated he earned at least $434.9 million in 2018, but the tax filings reported a $47.4 million loss. Now, according to the New York Times, roughly half of Americans pay no income taxes, primarily because of how low their incomes are. But IRS figures indicate the average tax filer paid roughly $12,200 in 2017, which is about 16 times more than what the president paid, according to that report. 
Speaking at a news conference yesterday at the White House, though, Trump did address that report, dismissing it as fake news, and he claimed he has paid taxes, vowing that information about his taxes will all be revealed. But at this point, he hasn't put forth a timeline. If anything new does come out of that report, or if the president releases his own information, we will be sure to keep you updated on any of those developments. But let's look ahead to tomorrow's debate. Tomorrow is set to be the first presidential debate of the 2020 election, and it's set to be right here in Ohio, Cleveland to be exact. So here's what we know. It will go from 9 until 10.30 at night at the Health Education Campus of Case Western. And how can you watch? Well, it will air live on WTOL with streaming coverage available online at WTOL.com, the free WTOL News app, and on our Facebook and YouTube pages. So pretty much everywhere. Chris Wallace of Fox News Sunday will be moderating and President Trump gets the first question, although there won't be opening statements for this debate. A small number of ticketed guests will be permitted in the audience, but the exact number has not been disclosed. The Cleveland Clinic will serve as a health security advisor to mitigate any exposure or spread of COVID-19. So that's it. That's what we know ahead of the debate. Tomorrow, again, we'll have full coverage and our reporters will be working to break things down after the fact. So stay tuned for all of that. And before I go, let me give you a little bit of fun and interesting election news. I know, right? Uh, elections and politics and fun. How can it be? Well, take a look at this. NASA astronaut Kate Rubens told the Associated Press on Friday that she plans to cast her next vote from space, more than 200 miles above planet Earth. Rubens is just outside Moscow in Star City, Russia, preparing with two cosmonauts for a mid-October launch and a six-month stay at the International Space Station. Most U.S. astronauts live in Houston, and Texas laws allow them to vote from space using a secure electronic ballot. But to be fair, NASA astronauts have already cast their ballots from space before. Rubens and Shane Kimbrough have both voted from the International Space Station. So, the more you know. But that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel. I'm Jensen, and now you are in the loop.